I thought it worth explaining what I'm actually doing here today. Uh, essentially, I've got these A to F jars, six jars, that I'm going to be testing different yeasts in. Uh, so I'm putting 500ml of tap water in each one. Then this one A is going to have 5 grams of turbo yeast. Uh, oh, and I'm adding 119-ish. There we go. 119 grams of, damn it, sugar into each one. Uh, that should yield a potential of 14% with the half liter of water. So yeah, this will be five grams of turbo yeast. This will be five grams of baker's yeast. This will be five grams of EC triple one eight. Then in D, I'm gonna put five grams of baker's yeast and one gram of fermate O. In E will be the same, but EC triple one eight and the fermate O. And then F will be a bit of a combination. So I'm going to put in three grams of baker's yeast, two grams of EC triple one eight, and one gram of fermate O. And I'm going to give these a week. Measure the specific gravity again. And this came to mind because I was just mixing up some more anyway. Uh, and I've been using a bit of a combination of three different yeasts. So I wanted to see which actually works best or fastest, or can if any can hit that 14%. Uh, so in a week, I'll check them again, see what the specific gravities are, see how the yeast is going. Hopefully, it doesn't bloom over. I'm just going to put the cap on lightly leave them somewhere dark so we'll see how this goes all right stirring the sugar into these actually took a little while but we've got the sugar fully dissolved and we've just added all the yeasts and nutrients to these as you can see i'm using fermate o and uh, it doesn't mix so well but the turbo yeast is already uh, going a bit if that wants to focus and then we've got the bakers which is falling the ec has fallen quite quickly bakers again EC again, but with a fermate, and then the mix of them here. So let's give them a quick. I've always wondered about all that stuff in the turbo that kind of falls out of solution or doesn't dissolve. It's not really the cleanest product, is it? Uh, fermate. It'll take a sweet time to dissolve. Minimal cross contamination here, nothing really sticking to the fork, thankfully. So, that's it. I'm gonna loosely put the lids on these and um, chuck them in a dark room for probably a week, see how they go, and come back to it then. Cheers, guys. Okie dokie, artichokey. It's been a week now since we put these on, and they all have some very different, interesting colors, but you can kind of pick which, which, which one is which. So from left to right, we had the turbo yeast, then the baker's yeast, and then the EC triple one eight. Then we did the same again uh, of baker's yeast with some fermade O, and uh, EC triple one eight with some fermade O. And then we also did three grams of baker's yeast, two grams of EC triple one eight, and uh, a gram of fermade O, just to kind of test out how they all go. So now after a week, I've got the hydrometer there. I'm gonna test each of them and see where they're at. All right, so super frustratingly, these have all fermented in eight days, it turns out, or just under eight days, to 14%. They're reading a final gravity at what is about 10, uh, 20 degrees here of uh, 0090. Now it's technically one, but because the uh, ethanol or whatnot this produces is lighter than water, the reading of course is a little bit lower. Sorry, ethanol is heavy or lighter. Anyway, it's different from water. Uh, I would imagine, yeah, it must be, yeah, lighter than water. Anyway, it throws the reading off a bit. So the results are inconclusive so far. They all performed exactly the same, which interestingly puts the cheapest baker's yeast un, you know, unmodified, good old number B here, the same as the more expensive stuff. Uh, I think next time what we might have to do is either go to 18%, or do it quicker. So maybe check it at four, aim for 18% and then we'll check it at four days and check it at eight days. So let me know what you think, if you've got any feedback and I'll include it in the next one. Thanks folks. Click the like, click the subscribe, leave a comment with your thoughts, it's greatly appreciated. These also can be filtered and used in baking or batters and whatnot. There's gonna be a little bit of flavor in them, but it can add quite a bit of texture. So there's a huge amount of options here, but we just don't know which yeast is most cost effective. Cheers.